the Love Your Life show. I am your host, Susie Pettit, a certified life and wellness coach, and I aim to bring you content every week that helps you live lives you love. And this week is no exception. Today, I have a wonderful treat for us. I have Elizabeth. I'm not even going to attempt to say her last name. I'm going to let her do that for you. <laughs> but she is a stress coach for moms. She is the host of Emotionally Healthy Legacy podcast. I freaking love that idea. Emotionally healthy legacy. I'm going to say it a little slower. And a mom of four. She is super passionate about mental health and emotional wellness in motherhood and womanhood. Okay. She helps overwhelmed women reduce the mental stress so they can respond with patience and calm okay, towards their kids, towards their spouses, towards their coworkers, towards the cashier at the supermarket. She teaches proactive ways to be less stressed, prioritizing your needs without guilt and ways to regulate emotions when triggered. I am thrilled to bring her to you as a guest. And I just want to say that if you are not a mom, keep listening because her tools here that we're going to speak specifically about resentment and rage affect us all warriors. Let's go. Hello and welcome to the Love Your Life show, Elizabeth. I just did the intro and I said that I would let you pronounce your last name. <laughs> yes, this is a tricky one. Um, it is pronounced Andreevsky. Oh, it's a wow. Russian last name. Oh, that's wonderful. Russian, so yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. So this, this is Elizabeth and we are thrilled to have her on the show. Can you tell us a little bit? I, I'd like to have you on the show to talk about you know, women and how we really get into this sort of cycle of guilt and resentment and then rage. Uh, and I love how you speak to that specifically moms. And could you tell us a little bit about how you got to be doing what you're doing? Yes, definitely. So I am 33 years old and I have four kids, 10 and under, okay. three boys and a baby girl. So like I am living this with you. I'm not like, you know, with, you know, oftentimes a lot of people I know that teach what I teach, they are just out of that season. And um, I feel like it's a little bit easier in the sense for them because like they're not living with it, but I have to implement everything I teach yeah. because I'm like right in the midst of this season. So how I got on this journey was a few years ago, I was struggling parenting my third son. He was like little curious George. He would like get into everything. And it was um, my older two weren't like that. Like I felt like with him, I literally like always had to know where he is. He would be like, Oh my God, I had one of those. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he'd be like a year and a half. He'd move this stool to the counter and climb on the counter and like get to the knives. Like he was just like, he would open the fridge and all the door locks. Like he, like it was just, he would just figure out he was a really good problem solver. And so they were just like draining me so much. It was just taking so much energy to, to keep up with them. And a friend of mine suggested for me to go to counseling and for like parenting. And I mm -hmm. thought, well, like, I know how to parent. I read a bunch of books, you know, right. I already have two older kids, but I'm like, Hey, why not? My insurance covered it. Mm. So I did go. And I was introduced to a whole new world of parenting. Mm. It's like respectful parenting, gentle parenting. You know, mm -hmm. I was raised in a traditional home and the parenting books that I read were more geared towards that. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't even know about gentle parenting. Like it, it was just yeah. not a thing. I, in my circles and conservative Christian community that I grew up in, it was just not something people talked about. Mm. Now it's kind of like in the last couple of years, the doors have opened up a lot more, but, and I was like, whoa, this is like a whole new way of doing things. Like trying to connect with your child, get down on their level, allowing mm. them to have feelings and being with them in those feelings and co-regulating and um, like having that emotional connection. So then they're more likely to cooperate and listen mm. to you. And I'm like, okay, this is awesome. This is great. I've always loved emotional connection, except I would go home and try to implement the strategies and maybe one out of 10 times I could mm. get it. The other nine out of 10 times, I felt like I just would go back to my old ways of doing things. Mm. And it was just so challenging. And I definitely noticed that when I was overwhelmed or stressed out or 
like had unmet needs, mm. I would react and like my brain would just have no energy to remember the skills. It would just go back to its old ways. Mm-hmm. And so shortly after I started that counseling, I bought um, an online course and it was, a, it's called Unburdened, but it was about like um, supporting yourself in motherhood and making mm. motherhood easier and lighter and deleting things out of your life that don't serve you and creating a day that supports you and creating oh healthy habits. And it was like, that course completely shifted who I was like Mm. I started to get up in the mornings before my kids I started to do like visualization and affirmations and writing like journaling and just like really setting myself up for success Mm. and then I noticed that throughout the day I was way more calm I was a lot more grounded I was able to like there was just so much more tolerance Mm. for like kids misbehavior or whatever you would call right, it. like right. them not listening. kids being kids right. kids being kids you know mm-hmm. like there was just so much more tolerance to the noise level with three boys at that time mm-hmm. and I just noticed a huge difference that when I was in a good place myself when my needs were met when I made the space for myself to feel restored mm-hmm. I was able to show up as the mom I really wanted to be for mm-hmm. my kids and I started to like talk about this to my friends. I'm like, okay, like everybody needs to know. Right. This. And I noticed that many moms don't know this information and they try gentle parenting and they feel like they're failing. Mm. And the reason is because they're so burned out, so overwhelmed, so overstimulated, they're running and empty. And like that's their brain doesn't have the energy mm. to remember any of those skills and implement mm. it. Yeah, I really, really appreciate everything you just said. And just one thing I want to highlight here is your honesty in this, that, you know, you, you, first of all, recognized that, oh my goodness, I'm not parenting in the way I want. And you reached out to someone and they told you to go to counseling and and you took that advice. And then you in the counseling, you know, getting tips and tricks and coming home and not being able to do them. And then you're honest about that too. And that that's one of the main things that, you know, I speak of a lot on this podcast is, is how that, that secret, like if you were to have kept that secret, that that's that shame, that's that shame cycle that is just so bad for mom guilt or woman guilt. This, this idea that like, oh my God, I must be the only one who can't implement these gentle parenting (laughs) tactics, or I must be the only one that is, you know, yelling at my kids or, um, and that is, it's so helpful to hear and that you just sort of, you remove that shame and secrecy cloud so that then we can do something about it. And it is, you know, mom rage is a, a, what is it? A term that I had not heard of until sort of recently. And then when I did, it's, it's like, I noticed that, you know, it's sort of like your ears perk up and you're like, Oh my gosh, wait a minute. Is that something like we can talk about? Is that like, is that okay? And maybe other moms experience this too. And like, wait a minute, you know, and, and, and yet your path, what you're saying is to just remove the shame and look at more, you know, the facts that you're saying that when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're feeling stressed, when your needs are not met, I love that you said, you know, your term of unmet needs, then you're going to be more reactive. So could we, could we start there with a little, like maybe why, why are moms yelling? Like why are, are, you know, feeling the rage? Like what is happening? So I want to share a story with you to kind of like before, this is this is a hard story to tell because it's it's very unpleasant um and like and then I'll explain why mm-hmm. what's going on why moms respond in rage so um my first baby was you know an average baby nothing much to it first parent not you know a little bit overwhelmed here and there but with my second one he was um colicky two weeks mm-hmm. in he developed colic and for six months it mm-hmm. was a lot of crying. I would say probably most of the time when we were driving in the car, he was just screaming the whole time. Oh it, it's God. hard on oh, your nervous it system. Hard. It's hard. You don't get enough rest. It's like by the time you six like- Six minutes throttle, is hard. Six months? <laughs> yes, yes. So it's like by the time, like I remember he was maybe like a month old and my oldest one was three years old. And it took me a while to finally calm him down. And he finally fell asleep and I put him in the swing 
and he was in the swing and my oldest one came up to him and he who knows why yeah took his hand and bit his finger Mm -hmm. the baby's finger so obviously the baby wakes up Mm -hmm. starts to scream and yell again and I lost it Mm -hmm. I freaked out like this is like makes me really sad to say this I came up to my oldest and I just smacked him on the head Mm -hmm. and I'm like what the heck did you just do Mm -hmm. and like obviously like completely lost and freaked out and right away all that mom guilt just like (laughs) rushes all over you're like oh my gosh I'm the worst mom in the world like I literally just hit my child like Mm -hmm. I did not want to do it was like this automatic reaction that like I didn't want it, but it just came out. Like I, I felt like I couldn't control myself in, mm. in that moment. And now knowing what I know, I know exactly why that happened. And I'll explain it to you. So I was sleep deprived. Sleep deprivation will do things to you that you oh, never thought yeah. you would do. I was like just physically exhausted. I probably didn't have much time to eat. Mm-hmm. Hanger is also a thing. Right. You know? I was running an empty. I didn't have a time to myself and recharge because my husband was at work and it was just me taking care of the kiddos by myself all mm. day long. I was just completely worn out and depleted. Mm. And what happens is that when you have unmet needs, let's say you're sleep deprived and you are hungry. Let's yes, take those, those are two big needs. needs. Yeah. <laughs> Basic needs, yes, they're very important, actually. And many moms neglect Mm -hmm. the importance of them. When those needs are unmet, that creates a threat in your brain. Mm -hmm. And so it shifts you from like your uh, executive part of the brain or thinking brain where you make logical, positive choices. We can problem solve like you and I, we are in our Mm -hmm. thinking brain right now. It shifts you to emotional part of the brain or even sometimes survival part of the brain. Mm -hmm. And when you're an emotional and survival part of the brain, it shuts off your thinking brain Mm -hmm. and you react because like those parts of the brain can't make positive choices. Mm -hmm. They they just, they are in reactive mode. It's either fight, flight, or freeze. And like Mm -hmm. you either freeze, you either fight or you flee, you know? Mm -hmm. And so- Um, for me, it was such an automatic reaction Mm. and it so much guilt and shame, right? Like Mm -hmm. now I know it's because I was completely worn out and depleted and my brain just reacted that way. And it was not a positive way. Mm -mm. Right. And so like now I teach moms, I always start out with the basics. So when Mm. our brain, when we have unmet basic needs, our brain is focus on our unmet need and it puts all that energy there and it has no space to literally emotionally regulate and Mm. stay calm so it's like when you're driving from work you're hungry and you're exhausted the person that just cut you off will piss you off a lot Mm -hmm. more than if you're just like in the morning coming home from sunday brunch you slept well eating well right yeah so you had a good time yeah you're you're like look at that they cut me off right and you're like "Eh," you know i'll just let him be right you know so like it makes a difference your Mm. unmet needs like basic needs or if you're like in pain Mm. add like having a headache or like really bad severe back pain like Mm -hmm. your brain sees that as a threat and it literally has very little space to emotionally regulate Mm. yes can you possibly but it's odds are much yes Yes, it's just a lot a lot a lot harder Mm. so a lot of the work that I do with moms is proactive because Mm. we need to set you up for success I do teach you in the moment regulation skills but if you're just trying to get by with those you're still going to find yourself reacting a lot Mm -hmm. if you have unmet basic needs then we have like you know on top of that on top of basic needs we like need to recognize our limits as Mm. moms some of us are highly sensitive some of us easily get overstimulated some of us have different limits than others and we see these other moms that do it all and have all these activities their kids are in and like they're involved in all these things and we feel like we need to do that Mm. so because that's what a good mom does that's you know and so we sign up for all these things and it just, we have absolutely no time to mm. recharge and restore. So we're so depleted. We're so overstimulated with our phones, with all mm-hmm. these like people's needs. And so then we tend to react. Um, I've heard this phrase that like rage is the flip side of 
felt helplessness. So when we are so yes. out of control, our whole life feels out of control. Our kids are not listening on top of that. Mm. We had no time to recharge. We just go, go, go. Our nervous system is completely overloaded. We haven't had any time to eat. We're like functioning on the third cup of coffee, mm. like haven't had a normal meal, stay up super late, trying to keep up with all the things. Of course, you're going to react. Like, yeah. It just makes so much sense. Like, mm. I don't want to say, oh, it's okay to have mom rage in the sense of like, excuse it. But it makes so much sense right. when you're well, so completely depleted. And I really appreciate that. And I just, I want to go back a little to, you know, the the things, themes that I'm hearing you say are, are this guilt, this shame, um, our expectations of ourselves. And I, I, you know, I am constantly coaching in that we do not make change from a place of shame and secrecy and beating ourselves up. And so in, I absolutely, neither of us are saying, yeah, go hit your child. We're saying we understand why you might yell or why you feel this rage. And in the understanding, like if we can look at it, if we remove the shame, so we speak of it, that's how we shift out of it. That's how you, you know, contact someone like you, or you can't, you know, you get into some of the tools where it's like, oh, okay. You know, other moms also yell, you know, other, and, and, and now what, what can I do about it? So that we don't feel, I mean, this, there is such secrecy in motherhood and well, it's also, you know, I, I know that I have listeners that are not moms, but it's, it's this idea, you know, we look externally and think everyone else has it all together. You know, as you said, like the mom is doing all the, all the committees, all the, she's running all the carpools and she's got that smile on her face and everything's fine. Or you have, you know, the woman that is managing the full-time job and has, you know, is also volunteering on that. And, it, and it's just, we think, you know, the grass over there is much greener. And then we're in our own heads, like what's wrong with me. And, and to your point that, helpless piece, um, which, yeah, is, is these expectations of ourselves. I heard perfectionism defined as, as unrealistic expectations of ourselves, or it was a, I just totally botched that, but it was something different word. It is this idea, like we have just our expectations are up here and our reality is down here. And then when we act in the reality, we feel such guilt and shame. Um, which is completely unhelpful. So I, I really appreciate that you are speaking to that, bringing attention. What I'm hearing you say is like, come on, like we're human. You actually have a human brain that requires a certain amount of sleep, a certain amount of food, a certain amount of you know downtime. And yet, you know, so the model that we put forth for being a functioning woman, the expectations we have on that woman in society or so high that then there is that helpless in, in between. I know that I have felt that. Like, how am I supposed to do all this? Like, there are not enough hours in the day. Yeah. Can I share a story with you? Mm -hmm. So well, I used to work as a physical therapist assistant and in my 20s. And I used to work with a coworker, and she had two kids. And she was the clinic manager. And she had a garden and her kids were involved in these activities and she would host these events at her house. And like, I remember just like wondering, I would even ask her, I'm like, how do you do it all? Like, mm. seriously, like, how do you get everything done? Like, I'm just like blown away. Like, mm. and you exercise, like, mm. like, and you go on dates, like, what the heck? Like, when do you like recharge? And this was happening in front of my eyes. So I was working at that clinic for about six, seven years. And a few years in, my manager started to have a lot of health issues. Mm -hmm. It started that she couldn't sleep at night. She mm. literally like could not sleep. Mm. And then she started to have digestive issues. Then lots of anxiety. Mm. And it was just spiraling. She would go to all these doctors trying to figure out what is going on. Like mm -hmm. what is wrong with my health? Because she eats healthy. She exercises like she seems like she's doing all the right yes. things, right? And her health was just completely falling apart. It got to a point where she had to leave her position and just to work part-time. Mm. And, and then to a point where she had to leave completely the company because she still couldn't function. And the truth was that like all the tests came back just fine. And the yeah. reality was she was completely, completely depleted, burned out, 
and like her oh, yeah. whole body just shut down and it's like I can't do this no more at all and like she literally had to stop everything for a while and then go back little by little but mm. take care of herself so much like if you won't pick a time to rest your body's gonna pick it for you and oh, it will for sure. not be a convenient time like right. and so I, just like yeah, yeah, you're telling like, so my story and my company's name, Strength, Mind and Body, because I used to be a personal trainer and I, I was that woman. I was your, like, I was fit. I was, you know, I like definitely from the outside had it all together and then had 32 seizures in a weekend and was like, oh, hold on. <laughs> and then had, you know, years of just medical tests and my hands were like crazy. So it's just all these different things and everything's coming back normal, but it's like, but nothing's normal. And I'm, it is... I hear of women now and they're like, I think I have IBS. I think that I'm this. I'm th and I'm like, I get it. And there's also, we have to recognize that it's not just the body, that it's also the mind and, and the stress that we're putting on us and the expectations and the all of this. And what I like about what you do, and I'd like to get into some of you know the proactive tools that you teach, is that you really encourage people to sort of keep their eye on their themselves and their family unit. And that that's where, you know, I'm, I'm older now and I am see it, it's like, this is like the lesson of sort of midlife where it's like, Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I didn't have to keep up with the Joneses. Maybe if I just do what the, what's right for my family, that's where, you know, the magic lies that I don't need a SAT tutor for all my kids. If, and I don't need the fancy piano, le like what is it for me? And keeping the intent there so that we don't get to that burnt out place. Yeah. And I think like you mentioned, like, oh, my kid's involved in this and this and this. And that's one of the things I go deeper in mm. my program with my mamas. Like, we need to figure out what is important for you mm -hmm. in this season of life. Mm -hmm. What truly matters and what do you like put value on? Because for me personally, as I was a kid that my parents you know, forced us to go to music school. Mm. Now I'm an adult. I never enjoyed it. It was yeah. always like forced. Now I'm an adult. I don't play violin. Oh my God. Like, me too. I took piano for 14 years yes. and like, and it's like thinking of sitting was... at a piano, I want to vomit. I'm like, no. yes, yes. <laughs> and like, I love my mom. She had good intentions, but in the reality, like it didn't in the long Checking run. Checking in that... with the kid. Right. My yes, dad it... loved piano. My sister is yes. an amazing piano player. I was. <laughs> yes. And yeah. so. Yeah. So it's like put so much energy and time was put into it and then stress mm. and tension. So you mm. have to kind of figure out what is truly serving my family mm -hmm. in this season. What mm. is the priorities in this season? Because if everything is important, nothing is important. Like mm. you have to pick what is important. That's like, that's one of the things that I teach with my moms. It's like, let's look at your schedule. What are some things that are draining you mm -hmm. that you don't look forward to? But every time you see that you have to go there, it's like, oh my gosh, I, oh, why did I sign up? What do I have mm. to go? Like, maybe let's reconsider maybe some of those things we need to let go of and mm -hmm. that might be uncomfortable you might disappoint some people but if it's so draining you and it's not serving you and you because of that you show up so depleted frustrated mm -hmm. and agitated at your family like is it really that important probably not right. we need to let go of it um the I mean that is so those are some of my memories I can remember like bringing my kids you know, to a soccer thing and then it, 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 whatever they wanted to do. And then the next thing and then going and then coming home and like shoving dinner in and then needing to go to the school committee that I signed up for. Cause I thought that's what made a good mom. And I would be short and snappy with my kids and then be at the meeting and feel guilt. Cause I'm like, what am I even doing? Like, I don't like what I'm doing at this meeting, you know, whatever this I, I don't know. It was like the PTA is something that is not my skill set. <laughs> and yet I just am there because in my head, I'm like, this is what a good mom does. And yet this good mom just yelled at her kids and was snippy and like, eat your tacos. You know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yes. what are we doing? So I really appreciate, I guess I just want to bring the focus to what you're saying is like, look at what's on your schedule, what lights you up, what drains you. Also the point of having some boundaries as a mom, 
and certainly, you know, a, a woman, if you don't have kids, but this idea, I know for me, I said, you know, my kids get to do one sport each season. Like, that's it. Like, if they don't want to do a sport, that's on them. But they, I had the kids that wanted to do like five sports. And there was some guilt there that was like, oh, I'm not letting them do like what the Joneses over there do and play soccer and tennis. And the, I'm like, no, for our family, this doesn't work. I need to have, you know, one sport per kid. And so having sort of those boundaries or guidelines ahead of time and allowing yourself to say that um, and to, and to get rid of some of those, those, those um, external pressures and expectations that your yeah. kid needs to. Yeah. And I think you, like you talked about, like, it's like, what do you tell yourself in those mm. moments? That's the, where the shame mm. and the guilt is going to come in. It's like, what is that internal talk? If you like, you know, you said you're sitting in that meeting, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, my gosh, like, you feel guilty for being here because you're missing out on other things. And um, so like you have. So I, one of the things like, for example, I work with my mom with my mama specifically, we touch a lot on like, you know, you lost your cool with your kids, mm -hmm. the shame and the guilt cycle with that. And it's like, I'm the worst mom ever. Like I'm screwing up my kids for life. They're going to hate me. Mm. Like those are the thoughts that creep in. And one of the things we create like a mantra mm. with uh, my mama is we're like, no, this is not serving me. I'm a good mom who's having a hard day. Mm, right? I love that. I'm doing my best and that is enough. Okay. And then at the end of the day, when the kids are in bed, instead of like when you go to sleep and you're just like have all these negative thoughts, take out a journal and say, I wonder why mm. I lost my cool today. Let's get curious. Like there's a root. Mm. Something is going on. Were you physically just exhausted? Okay. Mm. Were you overstimulated? Was there just so much noise and chaos? Were you just super anxious about something? Mm. You know, did you have some tension with your spouse and some issue that needs to be addressed? You know, were you just hungry? Mm. Like there's <laughs> always something going on. Mm -hmm. And it's really good to, instead of like beat yourself up and like have this negative spiral that is not serving anybody, mm -hmm. that will probably eventually lead to depression and more anxiety. Mm -hmm. Let's pull out of that and get curious and like, okay, I was thinking about the conflict I had with my spouse earlier mm. in the day that has not been addressed. Okay, what can we do about this? Mm -hmm. And then you journal maybe your thoughts about the conflict and be like, I think he's wrong because emotionally vomit <laughs> right. on your journal. I yes, say it I all love the time. Like, yeah. like, I think he's wrong and I'm right. And da, 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 da. Get it all out. All that tension is released into the journal. You're able to kind of let some of that go, process it, and then sometimes even sleep on it. And the next mm. day come to your spouse and be like, Hey, you know, that thing we talked about yesterday, we really need to circle back to it. Like, mm. I think, you know, this is my perspective. Would you please hear me out? Like, let's talk about this in a respectful way, you know? So yeah, um, I had heard, I mean, that's repair right there. And, and, and that circling back and doing something different. You know, you said like, if you're not looking at the end of the day with this wonder why curiosity, if we're sort of in that secrecy and shame, we're much less likely to look at it curiously and then learn the lesson. Like, yes, it can lead to depression, but we also, it also leads to us doing more of the same thing. If we yell and then mm -hmm. we, you know, bury that yelling with a glass of wine or a bowl of ice cream, which was my MO or <laughs> Facebook, you know, we just distract. And then the next day we're going to do the same thing again and feel guilty. Like, oh my God, here I am again. Yeah, versus this like I love you know the mantra of I'm a good mom who is having a hard day or I'm a good mom who yells or who yelled yeah. th at this like just remembering that we're good inside we have good intentions we're not trying to be bad quote unquote you know bad moms and then I love how you're saying I just want to bring focus to this to all the listeners that you're saying like at the end of the day this I wonder why like I wonder why that happened I wonder why yeah. I was snippy with it. I wonder why, because that yeah. then is the action that can move us forward. Yeah. And you can always repair with your kids. Mm. I personally, I, in the heat of the moment, I can't repair. Mm -hmm. I see how they're at fault and how I'm right. Mm -hmm. And that is because our thinking brain is shut off and we're so emotional. We only see our perspective. There's a science to that and psychology, but when you cool off and maybe even the next day, you mm -hmm. know, as you're driving your kids to school, 
you know, oh, I say it is never too late. Like, I, I mean, if, if we're sitting here as adults listening, like if you can imagine, we all had trauma in childhood. And if you can remember a time when maybe your parents were not as skillful, if they called you today and they were like, Hey, you know, Elizabeth, I'm really sorry about like, that still lands. Like it's still, (laughs) so it does. And, And in the moment I have found, not only can I not do it, but they often are not receptive to it. Like it, you know, they're in that, like, oh my God, mom's yelling. Okay. Now she says, sorry. Now, like what's going on? Um, so yes. And, and the reason is because both of us are yes. emotionally charged and the part of our brain that helps us like see other people's perspective helps mm-hmm. us feel like, you know, um, like help us to stay more regulated and calm. It's shut off mm. and we're in our emotional fight or flight response. when we only see how we are correct and everyone's wrong. Mm-hmm. And so that's why in the heat of the moment, it's, like, I don't ever force my kids to apologize mm. because if they're not ready, like, what's that fake apology going to do? Oh, like, I say the best it. apology is changed behavior. Like it, the, I'm sorry, isn't even helpful. So you've, you've given us a lot of tools. I've heard scheduling. I've heard mantras. I've heard journaling for the proactive when we're in that moment and we are, you know, maybe noticing our feelings and that feeling of helplessness or rage rising. Do you have anything that can get us to sort of, to take that pause or to like anything that you, you practice or that helps you? Yeah. So I'm sure you've heard a lot about it. Like deep breathing Mm -hmm. is very important. And so, but I can tell you what, here's the problem with deep breathing. It's if you wait till the (laughs) heat of the moment, the part of the brain that remembers to initiate deep breathing gets shut off Mm -hmm. and you just react. So yeah. one of the most helpful things that I recognize that was super helpful for me, I would do in my morning ritual, I would do like a meditation with some deep breathing. Mm. And I noticed that about two weeks in of doing that, that when I would start getting frustrated with my kids, my body would automatically initiate deep breathing without me even telling it to. Mm. Because it recognized this is what you need to stay regulated and calm. Mm. Now it might take you more than two weeks, but I'm just telling you my experience. Like when, um, like deep breathing is really important because it sends oxygen back to the part of the brain that helps you like make positive choices, the thinking Mm -hmm. brain, and it helps your nervous system to calm down. So here's my few things that I teach my mom. So if you notice you're getting really frustrated and escalated with your kids, you're noticing your tone change, you're getting more Mm -hmm. rude or maybe disrespectful if at all possible if everyone is physically safe try to remove yourself from the situation Mm -hmm. and go to a different room or different part of the house or step outside or go to the mailbox and back like go Mm -hmm. to the basement like remove yourself from that stressful situation because if you continue to stay in there eventually you're going to get to a point where you're going to blow up yeah it's going nowhere good (laughs) yes so let's take a moment instead of having a moment Mm. so remove yourself from a situation and then what do you do in that moment a lot of us want to just scroll on our phones to Mm -hmm. escape right because it just gives us that dopamine rush let's come up with some helpful tools right Mm -hmm. so deep breathing is important the other one is that I do like visualizing a peaceful and calm place I Mm. have like five minute meditations that Mm. I have and listened to that just put me into like ease and calm and just like relaxation and Mm. I'll just sometimes turn it on on my phone or just lay down on my bed and turn on some meditation music and just imagine myself being at the beach and like Mm floating in the water and that like relaxes and calms my nervous system sometimes it's like singing a song Mm -hmm. like I have like that's also like super calming some people like like instruments I don't (laughs) yes that would not be our go-to yes yes, but something that like truly like Mm -hmm. calms your nervous system but I think the biggest thing is walking away from the situation Mm -hmm. if at all possible and you can communicate with your kids like mommy needs a break Mommy's yeah. getting really frustrated and angry right now. I need to take a break so I don't yell. Well, and this this also can be used for the listeners that don't have kids. This can be used with your partner. This can be used with oh, your yes. boss. This can be used oh, with yes. your parents. It's that like noticing when your system, it, 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 so meditation helped me too. It helped me recognize more like the feelings in my body and then I could slow it down. So I might notice more that my chest is getting tight or you know, my throat is getting hot, which were for me were signs of that rage sort of coming or frustration or resentment. 
And then I could slow it down. And this would happen with my spouse. This would happen with, you know, kids for sure, but also other areas. And if you can leave for sure, but I just want to point out that the things that you said that you would go do in your closet or outside, walk to the mailbox, you also could do in person because I've done them with my kids right there. So one of them is just a deep exhale. And I know when I was first starting this, I would just, and my kids were like, oh, mom's doing that thing again. <laughs> but they like got to learn that it was really a safe thing for them. Like, oh, and I would explain to them that I'm trying to teach my brain. It's not being chased by a tiger. Like I'm just mm -hmm. settling down the nerves of them. Another thing is humming, which you said was, but for some reason the humming, and maybe you know better than me, like that brain science back there, but that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and you can be like, oh, I freaking think you know, but yeah. <laughs> as you're humming away. Another thing that it, for me, it was just like jumping up and down. Like it's, you know, changing your state. <laughs> yeah. You it's like a physical the... release. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So some people need the physical release. Mm -hmm. Like you can go rip some paper and, yeah, it and like throw mentioned. it yeah. on the wall. You can like, I just saw something the other day on Instagram. You, one of those big exercise like balls, balls yeah. that are kind of heavy though. The heavy ones that you go in the garage oh. and like lift them up and throw them on the ground, lift it up and throw oh it my gosh, that like would work for me. Yeah. Release. Like I personally typically don't need the physical release, but yeah. like another one, sometimes when I'm like so frustrated and like if I'm like doing homework with the kids and it's like getting tense, I remember I would just like walk along the hallway in my house and I'm like and do deep breaths and tell myself this is what it is it is right now I don't like it and I'll get through it mm. this is what it is right now I don't like it and I'll get through it mm. that allows yeah. that safety signal back to your brain and like but I think the biggest thing like is just like if you can pull yourself away from that stressful circumstance yeah. sometimes you can't and so that's mm. why when the deep breathing and the affirmations and mm -hmm. like some people do counting in their heads humming mm -hmm. like having right. the tools that work for you because everybody's a little bit different right yeah oh you have just provided us with so much information so I know my listeners are going to love to find you and follow you and and work with you so where is the best place to send them um, and I do want to mention that in the show notes, I have you put together a page just for our listeners. So yes, um, I did. Yeah. I did. And so there's a few freebies on there. Um, so one of them I, is like positive affirmations for when you lost your cool with your mm -hmm. kids. So like we have this negative, you know, mom guilt, negative thoughts, and it's like these other thoughts that you can put into it. So it's like you repeat those phrases. I say it and then you have the space to repeat that phrase um, after yourself. And one of them is a training that's like called be less triggered. And oh. it's like, how do you just be less deal triggered? with that rage? I'm so excited. I'm Listeners, that you have to check this out because this is the first time I've had a guest that put together a, like a, a link just for us, our love of your life listeners. And they're just great things on there. Plus, Elizabeth, you have a podcast yourself, correct? I do. Yes. I do have a podcast. So that's probably the best place to find me. I mean, I do hang out on Instagram, Emotionally Healthy Legacy, but my podcast, I release at least one episode a week, sometimes two. Um, but like, that's the place to find me. I give you a lot more strategies and tools that's and things so you can implement today. I, I love mindset shifts, but I also love the practical. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, I love the mindset. Let's go yeah. home. Tell me what to do. Like, what can I implement today? to make a change. And yeah, if you want to learn more how to work with me, just reach out to me, you know, yeah, um, I will have it's all of those links. I'm so excited. This is so helpful. And I just, yes, thank you. You're helping, helping all of us <laughs> full of energy moms take care of our needs. One, one unmet need at a time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me.